By now, the safety and efficacy of the NOAX is pretty well established, but little is known about the impact of appropriate dosing on the effectiveness and safety of a pixaban and a rivaroxaban, which is what we're talking about specifically in patients in real-world practice. So we're here to discuss the REVISIT U.S. study and its real-world evidence of stroke prevention in patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation in the United States. And to do so, I'm with Dr. Paul Burton, who is an MD and a PhD and a Vice President of Medical Affairs at Janssen. Now, this is data that's being presented at the European Cardiac Arrhythmia Society in Paris. Tell me a little bit about the trial, first off. Yeah, so the REVISIT U.S. study is a very interesting study for us. It's just under 31,000 patients, so it's large. It's a real-world claims database analysis, and it compares rivaroxaban to warfarin and apixaban to warfarin. And it asks a question, what are the rates of important clinical events, irreversible harm, so intracranial hemorrhage and ischemic stroke? These are the events that we know physicians and patients fear most. What are the rates of those in real world practice? So the results are fascinating. What we find is that the rates of intracranial hemorrhage are reduced by 47% significantly for rivaroxaban versus warfarin and we find that the rates of ischemic stroke for rivaroxaban versus warfarin are reduced by 29%, that it's just not significant. These are data coming from, what, a couple of trials that you're using data from Aristotle and the registration trial for Pixaban and Rocket AF, which was the registration trial for rivaroxaban, correct? So Rocket AF was the uh, registration trial for rivaroxaban. Aristotle was the registration trial for Pixaban. Right. So w these numbers, though, are what we're now finding in the real world. Right. So they're very encouraging and really demonstrate the continued utility of Rivaroxaban Zarelto in the real world in AFib patients. Now, in terms of dosing, because that's kind of the interesting area where we haven't had a whole lot of data before, what did you find there? Well, the interesting thing is, so we find a reduction in intracranial hemorrhage and ischemic stroke for Rivaroxaban versus warfarin. With apixaban, there's also a reduction in the rate of intracranial hemorrhage, a small 13% non-significant increase in the rate of ischemic stroke. We know that um, there are differences in adherence with twice daily and once daily drugs. Um, we know that patients um, also, uh, or physicians, prescribe different doses of drugs. So, it's an interesting finding because it now looks, it tries to integrate real world use of these agents with clinical outcome. And again, we find very robust, consistent reduction in these important events with Sorelto. So is there a lesson to be learned? I mean, doctors are really concerned about the risk of bleeding. And of course, patients need to be concerned about not only that, but also the potential down the line of a stroke. So in terms of dosing, what can you say about a lesson learned from this? Yeah. I think we published a study a while ago that showed that patients and physicians fear stroke almost as much as they fear dying. We believe that you must not trade off a reduction in bleeding, which is preventable and is treatable, with reduction in an event that is irreversible so a stroke. I think what we see here in this study for the first time is again consistent reduction in these endpoints for Zorelto. Um, taking drugs appropriately, there's a very famous quote by C. Everett Coop that drugs don't work in patients who don't take them. And it's true, Zorelto is a robust once daily medicine and it continues to demonstrate its, its great clinical utility here now in the real world, just as it did in the randomized studies. Were you able to look at how well doctors are following the guidelines in terms of dosing? We haven't looked at that here. We are, our work certainly is not done. We continue to do that. We have 91,000 patients now in real world studies. And you, you know as well as I do that um, this Explorer program of ours, when all said and done, we'll have 275,000 patients enrolled in new indication-seeking trials as well as real-world evidence. And uh, I think that when all said and done, we'll, we'll be able to really definitively answer that question. But these data are provocative and, and very reassuring, I think. Absolutely. And we have a variety of coverage from a, a number of meetings, as you might imagine, in CardioSource World News. Please check that out, where I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.